the next speaker is conference friend. It's not the first time he's, he's here. His name is Mutu. Uh, he, and he's a research and educational consultant in AI Tech UK and a visiting professor at the University of Southampton. The title of his presentation is Ethical AI and AI Quality by Design. So the stage, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, welcome to uh, this talk. Um, yeah, I think uh, he introduced me. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to give you a challenging task. That's my talk. <laughs> there is, a, uh, as we discussed at the earlier uh, speaker, there is a huge problem in the ethical side aspect, uh, both in the de data and the applica AI applications. So it's a huge challenge. We need a lot of collaboration. That's what I discovered last one year working on uh, this topic. Uh, we just volunteering researcher, unfortunately, because nobody pays for ethical aspect. It's really interesting uh, to see. Um, even though it's, it's so much important, uh, therefore I approached um, all big standard organizations such as IEEE, um, ISO, and the World Economic Forum. So no, nobody was willing to come forward uh, to address such very important issue um, with B and British Computer Society. So, but fortunately, that they, they were keen on creating a, a AI quality standard. So that much we were able to um, convince that it's such an important aspect. And it's an important time because now AI is pretty much uh, AI driven um, services, I might call another term, uh, applications, uh, apps. So these are just key terms. Uh, all just embedded without knowing or unknowingly uh, embedded. And our data, you know, every activity of our data is in the cloud somewhere. So it's such a very hugely important topic. So we are just volunteering research. We're trying to figure out what we can provide. So that's where I mentioned it's going to be more <laughs> task for you to consider. Um, what are the issues? So one of the things I uh, personally did was there are a uh, lot of experience in the last 50 years from system engineering, software engineering. It, uh, it doesn't be, need to be any key importance. Data science, again, we used visualization since the you know, uh, human evolution. Um, so there are so much knowledge uh, for creation. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure, identify what are the knowledge areas that they can mutually collaborate. So same thing, I'm a originally software engineering expert, expertise uh, researcher, if you like. Uh, and um, I noticed very, very less people trying to adapt the improvement uh, uh, has happened in the AI area in, for the benefit of software development. You take any software companies, uh, how much they uh, adapt <laughs> the knowledge that has been already created in the commercial uh, world. So there is a huge gap between the areas and the businesses. And I'm just trying to give you some highlight. So um, there may be some introduction uh, because just to highlight the background. Um, so that's it, me. Thank you for listening, coming to the uh, uh, talk. Um, so that I'll just briefly go through the rationale, as I already mentioned. There is a need for the interplay between three major areas, you know, the software engineering, system engineering, uh, AI, data science, because they've all grown and there is so much knowledge and wealth. I'll show you a little bit of where are they can meet. Um, so some of the I have more questions, challenges that I ad identified when I joined this uh, AI uh, tech company uh, to 
you know, a lot more challenges that I identify than the solutions. So some of them I'll try and put forward. So let's take um, software engineering um, in particular. Uh, you have 60 software development methodologies invented or adapted, used somewhere, or some already uh, not being used. Um, you can see there are 40 design metrics, methods, 37 benchmarks, 20 kind of project management. If you take add agile software development, there are maybe another 20. So this is uh, what and every company is uh, using. There is no standard, standardization even there. So no one to say oh, this is the one uh, we need to follow. No, no, nothing. Um, there are 20 kind of, um, more than 20 kind of testing methodologies, uh, test tools, and each company uses. We don't know how they used and how, what they developed. We, we, uh, this is another issue. That we, uh, there's one of the ethical aspect is the human right, as um, our colleague, the earlier talk mentioned. So this is also part of the principle of ethics. So we don't know how it is developed, how it is was being tested. Nobody documents, nobody asks, isn't it? We just use, we enjoy. Um, but you know, these are the big questions to be asked because we have the right to ask as well. Um, again, ML AI algorithm, that's huge. How do we know which one to use? What, which has been efficient? Uh, you know, if you have a problem, uh, you have a problem to solve, uh, what strategy we need to use? So there is some, so much to think because our, the, the data that we created is also creating huge issues, dilemmas, decisions to make. We may need another AI, maybe probably augmented AI to help us with what has been discovered. It's our own invention. So again, s statistics, visual visualization techniques, there are so much that we already invented in the human evolution. Um, how, therefore, one of the uh, solution I thought is the interplay between the areas, how they can get together. Um, you know, say in an organization, before they start to develop a particular applications, uh, there should be a, a, a software engineering expert, there should be a machine learning AI experts and data science expert trying to identify you know, the commonalities and uh, rationale and all should be documented and all published you know, before they release the product. So this is all part of the ethical side. Um, how, uh, as I mentioned, in, if you go to any software organization, um, what do they use in terms of AI? In, unless until it was an AI product. But there are so much knowledge already created in wealth of knowledge uh, techniques in the AI community. Uh, wh why not to try and use um, AI into software development? So that was our recent book on um, software engineering in the era of cloud computing. Uh, to identify, we have created few, few number of projects that traditionally is struggling in the software industry. What are the quality metrics they have known? What are the test metrics we can capture with the AI technology uh, autonomically? So there is no need for them to invest, uh, you know, do manually what uh, invite uh, assessment and they need to collect. That's the traditional form of uh, collection. So there are so much, you can see these uh, identified across the life cycle. If somebody uh, in case didn't know, um, software engineering is a life cycle, probably requirements engineering. People might call in the business side, they might call um, business requirements yeah, or f feature list. That's what product for a product development. And then try and identify in detail what are those requirements are, because that's the key investment. Again, in the 50 years of um, system development, software development, what we learned is that if, if you spend less time in requirements, you are going to spend 80% of your cost uh, after release, just to trying to maintain, satisfy your customer, those who paid for it. 
So this is that's well known, established. There is nothing wrong. It's a law. It's an iron law of software, um, and also it's a ripple effect. So that's the basic. So why not spend a little extra cost in the requirement, get these communities involved to identify really what are the effects after release that might have on the society, on the people, yeah, when you include ethical side. So uh, these huge issues, design, as I mentioned, there are so many metrics, what rational to use to decide on which uh, methodology to use uh, efficient. So some of them, the, the AI can help with us. Um, so again, the more recent, I think we had last day, today's talk on data pipeline, AI ops, this uh, all buzzword, um, and it's quite interesting technology. There is no, uh, there is something we can. There is this is one area where there is a commonality. So the DevOps uh, is the agile uh, method from emerged from the agile is now widespread across different areas because this is basically automation. That's where the issue comes in. Yeah. So. Um, and you know, the, in the DevOps, there is a three-way principles. Again, our DevOps uh, principles does emphasize you do first most of your time in the uh, development, which is your business requirement, elaborating business requirements, validating your requirement. The, the simple principle in the requirement is that you identifying require business requirements and validating the business requirement in some form whether you use automation, technology, with the people, and then do evaluation before you actually select your product features, feature list. And that extra time will help us to reduce your development cost. That's a known, uh, uh, the iron law of computing, in fact. So the second is to then loop over. You develop a little bit, then you understand what the product uh, looks like and come back and it reiterate and so on. And the third way, third way principle is the continual experimentation. This is what it, it, the DevOps original principles are. Now again, AI op, ML ops, people who adapted, do they document that this principle has been adapted and, the, and, the, and do we know that documentation? So these are some of the ethical question in terms of the development side. Um, I, the first thing, basic principle is that oh, this is the introduction. What ca the bl building blocks of AI? The quite important to know the characteristic of each building block before you develop, so that that gives us the knowledge to capture the requirements of your system. Uh, if it is a computer vision application that we heard quite a number of applications, then one of the requirement is ethical. Uh, requirement. Let's, for a simple example, uh, you're taking picture or video in a community uh, environment. But how do we ask? I think that question I asked uh, in the yesterday presentation. Um, how the system will ask uh, that? Hey, look, I'm taking the video or picture of you, your presence. If you are willing, um, you know, maybe take some wise oriented application, yes or no. So th that kind of requirements can be built in. So this is where the characteristic no, for the type of system that we develop will help us to incorporate, integrate the, the, the requirement of um, what I call, also known as in the academic world, non-functional requirements. So the functional requirements are known as business requirement, the product features, the non-functional requirements that traditionally are known as like scalable, uh, reliable, testable, and things like that. So for the AI system, they are different. So this is what going to be interesting to see. Um, simple, you all expertise, so I don't need to spend. One literature I was trying to find out what methodology, uh, what techniques is been quite successful. Do we know this? You know, do we know what machine learning met method has been used in the product that we use, uh, and if that was more successful? So the only literature I found on this is the, this graph. 
but that gave me big satisfaction because I don't need to read hundreds of <laughs> papers to uh, identify which luckily this one of the other has done this for us. So it, what it shows is the reinforcement algorithm has been quite popular or widely used. Uh, and also if you look at the su supervised learning and unsupervised uh, learning kind of going together. So there's more and more uh, emphasis on reinforcement learning. Now, this is quite important lesson for us, you know, how, why we don't know this, why people, they don't tell us what machine learning methodology they used. So this is again our ethical right. If you are using a product, you're buying a product, they should advertise, you know, explicitly. This is the methodology they have adapted in this particular product. Um, that should be part of, unfortunately, we cannot ask that right. It should come from a government initiative and, and so forth. So that's quite a uh, useful knowledge uh, to gather. Um, okay, now comes to the ethical principle. What are the ethical principles are there? So the big company, the European Union, has one document, the World Economic Forum has one document, uh, IEEE has one document, ISO now just uh, has one document, but we are just launching, or they are going to um, launch the ISO 9000, uh, not 9000, 2740 for ethical uh, aspect of the AI. So that's the one at least good thing that we managed to achieve. Uh, what are the basic principles now how uh, we will know <laughs> again uh, this is what i mentioned we probably ne might need augmented ai because even with, within the development technical side whether you are uh, um, ai engineer or uh, software development engineer which one to choose we we really struggle uh, which one was more efficient um, and therefore i think we be as a human that that limitation have probably we have reached, so maybe some kind of augmented intelligence might help us. I mean, that's the uh, slide. Um, there are different categories of AI. Um, there is a difference in meaning. What does it mean ethical AI to AI ethics? Um, the ethical AI is how the AI actually developed and the some of the characteristics the algorithm, the things I mentioned, what algorithm they used uh, to develop that product, uh, and do they know the, the actual users? You know? So that kind of thing, what, what testing they have done before they use, you know, I mean, if you think of uh, autonomous car, it's quite serious to know all the details before you sit on the car, isn't it? Um, and um, so the things like that, that's you know, called ethical AI. Uh, AI ethics is much more towards um, the kind of people oriented and the impact after the system has been developed. So therefore, for that uh, company, it's important to identify and publicize how it has been developed and they can then address the AI ethics aspect. Yeah? So then uh, obviously data ethics comes very beginning because when you select data, how the data was uh, used, where it has been collected. Do they have the right to collect that data? I mean, that's another thing, you know, how our data has been going through from your mobile. Do you have, you have the right to say, could Google or Microsoft, uh, what, <laughs> to say, uh, yeah, we are collecting this data, uh, maybe some simple message, if you don't mind, we are collecting. <laughs> this data, then you can turn off or, you know, that should, there should be that option um, to say yes or no. So the, the data ethics is one of the key basic criteria that they should uh, analyze. I know I was te uh, I taught in the university, um, the most of them choose these days the AI data science projects and they can't even think of um, and doing a thing, uh, data ethics. So I have created some online questionnaire for them to go through, you know, what was the source of data? Uh, did you anonymize 
certain basic principle. You, you can't use someone's name in, on their data. So quite, there are quite sensitive data. So therefore, that's the basic, real basic principles that they should understand. And the business ethics. So you can see the classes of, you know, what type of business, how it's going to impact on the society, um, you know, what will be the revenue that can help. Yeah, yeah, there's another classic example on the business ethics is the UK energy crisis, if you all probably know. Um, the, the, uh, there is... Um, there is energy crisis. Every month, almost, the UK household need to pay uh, over 300, 400, 500 pounds. Uh, and um, whereas at the same time, the uh, companies are advertising, making billions of uh, profit. Where does it, there is no ethical regulation there. I, I know what government looking at it. They have no right to tell the business, no, you know, give that money back because it's a business. They have the right to make money. <laughs> That's their business. So but it's a huge issue. Even the government couldn't solve. Uh, if they solve, there is a big, they will, the, every day one prime minister is what is happening. <laughs> monthly basis. Uh, so this is a huge issue because nobody, that, that issue, simple issue, they can't solve. Because they are then instead, no, 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 don't ask us to ask the business. You take the money from us. <laughs> because I want to stay in the power. This is what is going on. Yeah. So the, this is a huge challenge. This one re recent example is what going on and they can't solve. So the the, the, the higher energy prices, but at the same time, the energy companies are advertising 20 billion, 30 billion profit. How this is possible? Do we have no right? We are the consumer, we should have also the right. So there's, there's a complex business ethical issue, legal uh, in, involved, okay. So now another big challenge, okay, as I said, I'm going to give you a lot more <laughs> task of questions to consider and maybe uh, one day we can uh, might get together. Now there are not just general AI, that was the principle just for general AI. There's now uh, new classes of AI emerging, right? So there's responsible AI, um, explainable AI, um, Conversational AI, such as, such as chat, chat bots, chat bots, generative AI. This the fourth class. Yeah, and there's a lot of talk on on generative AI because we wanted to generate the knowledge uh, by the AI themselves. So, wh the, what are the the different eth ethics? The general ethics that we discussed is is not sufficient because it is. For instance, you know, the, the US, uh, one of the big questions came in the general AI is that the uh, US justice system adopted uh, the Cosmos uh, justice uh, pred prediction system. Uh, you probably you might know this. So it unfortunately, with the historical data, it was discriminating because it predicted <laughs> all, you know, uh, uh, different community, particular community uh, in this prediction system. That's where it's all started. And uh, there was huge issue, uh, you know, the AI. Obviously, AI did based on what the data was used, uh, but that became quite completely wrong uh, and so on. So the, now we are in a, uh, they decided to have, go for responsible AI, you know, such as, uh, in the autonomous car, uh, explain AI in case of uh, predictive modeling in the justice system. So when it predicts uh, something, uh, you, have, you are in the airport and it predicts uh, you, might, you might be looking differently or looking at something weirdly might trigger them uh, to predict that you might carry something. So that it, the system need to explain. What, what the fact was. 
and before and hum, there should human int- should be involved on before actually taking any actions yeah so that kind of serious issues going on same thing in the conversational ai how much we you uh, when we use the chatbot you ask question uh, i uh, often even google assistant and voice oriented technology uh, i don't know the answer for it uh, that's the way they just stop you asking so they that, that's going to be another issue and the, the traditional issue of the sustainability is now a big issue uh, and also part of ethical side because if you develop and if it is users consumers in this energy prices time you have a google assistant at home uh, all over the room and it is consuming energy uh, it's now people are struggling for living so how it can adapt oh okay your energy cost is so much i might reduce uh, some of the my voice or sound so how it could autonomically adapt sustainability in your living environment simple example um safety and security such as in autonomous car so there are huge challenges okay i then uh, there are these are the the what the guidelines from iso um, the eu and various uh, documented uh, places uh, providers privacy accountability safety security transparency um, explainability that's where the they created ex- explainable ai um human control of the technology you know the, uh, the decision as i mentioned for example before it takes the uh, de- such decision using based on the previous data uh, there should be a human intervention before you actually um, decide justification that's what happened in the us compass uh, justice predictive system um, professional responsibility Uh, promotion of human values i think we had also quite number of talk talks on this so in particular they are worried about transparency justice and fairness uh, and how we can teach ai to be fair it's a big challenge um in the cases um so these are what i discovered uh, the number of ethical principles uh, documented in various um uh standards and so on um so um uh, so you, you can see sustainability uh, which i mentioned is also quite important in our current living uh, conditions um uh, okay so this is what uh, in uh, uh, what we call our uh, uh, volunteering research organization um known as the right to intelligence or public intelli- intelligence um uh, and there is a um, there is a website public intelligence.org um describing sort of our own principles and there is a, uh, also assessment which is not at ready um techniques so these are the uh, principles that, that we created um you know we have the right to the data intelligence data being used whoever it may be yeah we need to know the data we we have granted the uh, right to u- uh, use our data so that's big question well it's uh, uh, something we 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 can't um make a legal action but there is something uh, one of the key principle um I've also known as human right in in the previous talk um purpose driven um disrupt prevention um, risk evaluated we need to know what are the risk they have identified and uh, analyzed uh, accountability this is again another uh, key um so i'll just uh, i think i mentioned quite few example of uh, what i meant how we can address in the requirements or in your business requirements some of these characteristics that's where it's quite important to know what type of system you are going to develop and what are those characteristics and how you address those characteristics in your business requirement that's simple as that so with that um also looked at because it's a huge topic i mixed both ethics and quality uh, because they are go together um quality if you look at the quality metrics 
ட்ரெடிஷ்னலி அகெயின் ஃபிஃப்டி இயர்ஸ் ஆர் ஹண்ட்ரட் இயர்ஸ் வி ஆல்ரெடி டெவலப்ட் யூஸ்ட் போ இன் ஆல் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் போத் ஹார்ட்வேர் எலக்ட்ரானிக் சாஃப்ட்வேர் ஸோ சம் ஆஃப் த தோஸ் திங்ஸ் இன்னோ ரிலையபிலிட்டி சேஃப்டி செக்யூரிட்டி டெஸ்டபிலிட்டி ஆர் அப்ளிகபிள் ஃபார் ஏ இன்னோ ஆட்டோனமஸ் கார் ஃபார் இன்ஸ்டன்ஸ் வி டேக் சேஃப்டி இஸ் த கீ மெட்ரிக்ஸ் தட் வி கான்ட் அதர்வைஸ் ஹேவ் அ ட்ரஸ்ட் டு கெட் இன் டு த கார் robustness efficiency so there is quite number of uh, um, uh, metrics so uh, when you look at the ai quality metrics um, accuracy how do we predict the accuracy of the ai system if they haven't uh, documented uh, and so on uh, explainability again this is key um, stability conceptual soundness this is what another issue how your model has been selected that's why the uh, graph i showed you how do we know which model was more efficient uh, that will satisfy um, people as well as the product so that's conceptual soundness uh, reliability fairness privacy things have been mentioned data quality and so on yeah so when i uh, put them together yeah i um quality metrics and the traditional software um system metrics uh, that we know already there is a common criteria which is the yellow reliability the, uh, and the security you can see rest of it all unique to ai systems so this is another uh, uh, lesson for the businesses uh, okay so i'll similar thing i produce then i looked at how the 50 years of system engineering software engineering can help cuz still the ai system will need to satisfy those traditional uh, characteristics um how ai can help what are the again how do we know what method metrics to use so luckily there is uh, this guy he again has identified uh, safety roba robustness and reliability some of the key techniques that you can adapt so you know that there, there is a wealth of knowledge maybe as i said we could have another argument at ai to probably tell the ai engineer okay you would said desire to choose reinforcement learning these are the example case study that has been successful that has failed something if they have uh, advertised published their uh, knowledge then the no, the knowledge management tool kind of thing augmented ai i can tell the ai engineer what was went successful what didn't go uh, and same thing to the software engineer uh, the ai can tell what techniques uh, worked well and not worked well so uh I, this is the ai and the ml ops so that's the process i started to merge um those who don't know this software development methodology uh, agile methodology is the, the the requirements for ml uh, the design and then build test and continue ca cad is the continuous integration continuous deployment uh, concept how they can be mapped on the ai development phases so something uh, we we already can do um so i just for experiment because i'm <laughs> i'm also in the academician i thought that doing something uh, to demonstrate in the requirements business requirements uh, level um so when i looked at the requirements engineering uh, again there's so many methods as i mentioned there's hundreds of methods But how do we know for ai type of system which one to choose um so uh, i looked at the literature there there's quite popular method that's already been used for ai uh, this is known as requirements engineering for ai um goal oriented uh, requirements engineering uh, eml use case modeling if you if you know use case modeling um signal temporal logic um traffic sequence charts conceptual model uh, and then uh, i've been using business process um modeling notation that's quite simple and easy to evaluate key performance metrics because the ai system 
is quite complex. If you look at the architecture of AI apps, for instance, it's in your device, which is you can call Internet of Things, and that goes to the your local internet provider. Maybe in this case, Crown Plaza Hotel. Hotel has our own data because we are using their internet. <laughs> Every time you browse, there is somewhere is watching us in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, from the ho hotel and then maybe going to the local server, I don't know, uh, local server who is using um, a business server and then your government server and then going to the... So, there is so much involved. If you take simple uh, 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 internet search, so there is a complex system going on. Now, the, it's... Uh, how do we know that performance? Because this is another issue. The AI system is using enormous amount of energy consumption. That's also part of the sustainability. So um, such things, it's good to uh, do some modeling in the requirements before you start to implement. So it will tell us uh, how much cost it needs for each function when they, uh, you know, when you search queries, for instance, uh, app, and how much uh, resources you need. So I'll just going through that. So I, I've used the business process modeling to study the quick performance analysis of your um, simple service. Okay. Um, so these all I mentioned the non-functional in the software development area, engineering area. They call it non-functional requirement. The thing ethics, quality metrics, what they call non-functional requirement uh, area. So fairness, robustness, explainability, responsibility, causality. So I just uh, put them in the non-functional categories, reinforcement learning, uh, performance requirement. So then uh, as a project manager, for instance, I also developed uh, project management techniques so that you can identify you list your AI features it will offer, and you need to know the cost as well. You don't want to get into something that uh, uh, undeliverable is what happened. Another lesson in the software industry. There is, um, um, again, I go back to UK. Uh, UK government spent um, billions of pounds for NHS uh, healthcare automation. Billions, billions, on several years never been delivered. <laughs> so there is a never been delivered. <laughs> so they, they, they can't do anything. Um, so there are number of, again, you model, cost estimation model, because they didn't estimate the cost probably, properly. Yeah. So how much it is going to cost, government didn't expect. And same thing, similar example is the, the, the high-speed railway they brought uh, suddenly. The previous um, government said, oh, we are going to make all UK high-speed railway. And that project collapsed again because they already spent and ticked various places and they said they can't uh, do because no Sorry, space. We're, yeah, yeah, we're running out of time, uh, so if we can of, just yeah, like okay. make it faster. So there is Thank a project you. management. This is the framework, whole life cycle framework I've created. Um, this is the reference architecture for AI system to develop. So I've, I've introduced the concept of service bus. Again, in the software revolution, there's a concept of service bus. So you don't mix the layers. So you all going through the service, similar to your our USB, how hardware revolutionized when you. I think of it. So, um, so I did what we call business process modeling. So it's a bit small. Um, so I just used the chatbot application uh, to start with. You know what is going on, you, what question you ask the user, and it goes through the the various layers of the architecture, and you can study uh, how much time it took. So I put just hundred users asking the same different questions at the same time, for instance, uh, for just to simulation study. So you took, uh, for, it took 17 seconds to uh, answer them. So this is simple metrics and how much resources you would need. So the simple quick uh, simulation study will tell the engineers some of the key performance metrics. Uh, and that's my summary. 
So there's a lot of questions uh, then to answer. Uh, so we all work together and thank you very much for listening. We're due, but still, like, we have time for one question. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. You had a lot of uh, things to say and text and everything. Uh, but uh, I want to focus just on one question. Yeah. Do you think it's ethical uh, to, uh, to offer a choice uh, like... Uh, they do thanks to the GDPR when you access any website. Do you think that's, uh, that's ethical when we know that uh, nobody looks at these uh, you know, questions and nobody looks how our data is taken and where it's taken? So that's, uh, that's my, my question. I, I, I think you, you have... I personally think if you're visiting a site um, and you have the right whether somebody to record. Because they, they are developing a recommendation system. It's improved their business, not our business. And we it's not ethical. It's yeah, to, for, <laughs> this is not, not, not made the ethical way, the GDPR. Uh, ask uh, this and they, they take data. And everybody uh, confirms that, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's different. Because GDPR says they want to know what website, for instance, you accessed, yeah? And uh, all I'm saying from our point of view, yeah, they can document GDPR says, but we need to know when you're accessing, oh, we, this has been used to collect for GDPR. Then I might satisfy, okay, somebody in uh, uh, authority is collecting this data in my benefit. Well, it's taken for marketing mainly, not uh, only yeah, for... Uh, is, that's where the question is. So you have the right, if you are using your marketing, you use it. Like, for instance, there's a lot of companies say, if you have a website, you can put their commercial website. Everybody, when you click, you get some money off. So they should offer you that money. Okay, well done. Then it's good. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll solve everything. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the great presentation. And yeah, we have a lunch break, so we'll see. We'll be here in around an hour.